All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the equation 25 to the power of x minus 5 to the power of x is equal to 20. So to solve this equation, I'm going to first start by subtracting 20 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get 25 to the power of x minus 5 to the power of x minus 20 is equal to 0. Now, 25 to the power of x, I can rewrite this as 5 squared to the power of x. So I have this minus 5 to the power of x minus 20 is equal to 0. And now from here, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. And a to the power of m times n, I can rewrite as a to the power of n times m. So if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then a to the power of n times m should equal a to the power of n to the power of m. So phi to the power of 2 to the power of x is going to equal phi to the power of x to the power of 2. Now this minus phi to the power of x minus 20 is equal to 0. And now I'm going to let phi to the power of x is e equal to y, so I get y squared minus y minus 20 is equal to 0. Now, to solve this, I'm going to be using the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 20. So I get y equals negative negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 1 squared, which is positive 1, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 20, all over 2a. So 2 times 1. And this is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 80 over 2 which is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 81 over 2. And the square root of 81 is equal to 9. So I get y is equal to 1 plus or minus 9 over 2. Now this gives me two solutions. I get y equals 1 plus 9 over 2, and y equals 1 minus 9 over 2. So 1 plus 9 is 10, and 10 divided by 2 is 5, so I get y equals 5 as one solution. And 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Negative 8 over 2 is negative 4, so y equals negative 4 is another solution. Now from here, remember how we let 5 to the power of x equal to y. So this means I get two solutions. 5 to the power of x is equal to 5, and 5 to the power of x is equal to negative 4. So, let's look at this equation over here. 5 to the power of x equals negative 4. Well, we can't take the power of a positive number and turn it into a negative number, meaning this equation has no solution. And for 5 to the power of x equals 5, to solve this, what most people do is, for other exponential equations, we would have to take the log and do a bunch of other stuff. But as over here, we could just see 5 to the power of 1 is going to equal 5 because anything to the power of 1 is itself. So this is my solution. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the equation x to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 729. So to solve this, what I'm first going to do is take the power of 3 on both sides. So I get x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. Now, m times n, I can also rewrite as n times m. And if something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n, 
then a to the power of n times m should also equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So in simpler terms, a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So now from here, I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3. And I can think of x to the power of 3 as m and 3 as n. So if I switch the places of these two, I get x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3. And remember, this is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, from here, I'm going to let x to the power of 3 equal to the variable y. So I get y to the power of y is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, I can simplify 729 to the power of 3. So 729 is the same thing as, so 729, let's find some factors of this. So a factor of 729, let's try to divide this by 3. 729 divided by 3, we have 2 over here, so we get 6. We subtract 7 with 6, we get 1, we bring down to 2. 3 times 4 is 12, and now we bring them to 9, 3 times 3 is 9. So I get 729 is equal to 243 times 3. Now, 243, if I divide this by 3, I get 81. So I have this times 3 times 81, or sorry, I have 3 times 3 times 81, and 81 is the same thing as 3 to the power of 4. So I have 3 times 3 times 3 to the power of 4, which is equal to 3 to the power of 6, meaning 729 is the same thing as 3 to the power of 6. And 3 to the power of 6 I can break that down into 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared, which is equal to 9 to the power of 3. So I'm going to replace 9 to the power of 3 with 729. So I get y to the power of y is equal to 9 to the power of 3 to the power of 3. And the reason I did this is because 3 to the power, 9 to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is the same thing as 9 to the power of 3 times 3. And 3 times 3 is 9, so I get y to the power of y is equal to 9 to the power of 9. And now I can use the property a to the power of a is equal to, if a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a equals b. So in this case, y is equal to 9. Now, recall how I let x to the power of 3 equal to y, meaning I get x to the power of 3 is equal to 9. So now to solve this, I'm going to take the cube root on both sides. So I get the cube root of x to the power of 3 is equal to the cube root of 9. Now the cube root of x to the power of 3 is simply just x. So I get x is equal to the cube root of 9. And this is the same thing as 9 to the power of 1 third.